here on our second Sunday in Lent. And we welcome Tyler Spellius to our pulpit this morning. He and Muriel are doing a pulpit exchange, so she is down at the United Church of Byron. Uh, don't forget, just in a couple of weeks, we have our spring extravaganza coming up. So we will be looking for baked sale items. And they always say, small, unless it's a whole pie, most smaller, just a few cookies or a few brownies sell the best. Whole pies, apparently, sell. Um, so we'll be having vendors, we'll have a cafe. Of course, we'll be looking for help, and you can contact Catherine Ray. She is in charge of gathering everything together. Uh, just a reminder that our church office is open Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 9 to noon. Does anybody sitting in the congregation have an announcement? And we will start with our choral intro. <laughs> of sexual orientation, gender identity, race, nationality, skin color, culture, differing abilities, age, or political affiliations to participate fully in all aspects of church. Our ministry is to bring the good news of Christ's love to all. We work in God's name to tear down walls and build community to walk with each other through all of life's circumstances, to provide for those in need, to offer comfort to the hurting and the sick, and to uplift the broken heart. Where we fail, we ask for God's forgiveness. May the Holy Spirit and our siblings continue to challenge us to do better. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Let us join together in our call to worship. Do not be, be afraid to answer the call to discipleship. What does the call require? Letting go of our life as we know it, following the way of the cross, aligning our soul with God's. We step out in the way of Jesus by losing our life to save. Do not be afraid to walk in the way of Jesus. We answer the call unashamed and unafraid. Amen. Amen. Let's join in our invocation. O God, o God we are offered every opportunity to embrace the path that helps us gain the world at the expense of our soul. Instead, you have called us to yourself and to follow in the way of love and compassion. Teach us about Jesus' way and lure us away from the paths of self-absorption and greed. You have called us to discipleship, to self-emptying, and embracing your way with courage. May it be so. Amen. Our first hymn is number 493, Jesus I the
Let us pray. Gracious God, on this beautiful day, we come to you in thanks. We come to you in thanks for the many gifts that you have given us, the joy of family, friends, this church, this earth we live upon. We ask that you help this world come to peace. We know that wherever we look some days, it seems like there is struggle and strife. And we just ask for your way as a way to show others to peace. We pray for those who are sick and hurting in any way, whether it be physical, psychological, or spiritual. We ask your, for your healing touch upon them. We ask for your strength so that they know that you are with them. We pray for this church. We ask your blessing upon our leaders within this church as well. And together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn is number 40, You Are the Way.
Dear ones, may the God of compassion, Jesus the wounded healer, and the Holy Spirit who shapes and transforms us anew, grant you peace and hope for your soul. For we know that the one who calls us to follow in the way of Jesus is merciful and offers the consolation of love in a world of empty promises. Be at peace, and thanks be to God. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for having me here. Will you please pray with me? Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations upon all of our hearts be worthy in your sight and in keeping with the teachings of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Rock and our Redeemer. Car rides were very relaxing for me as a child. I don't know if there's something about the steady motion of a car 
or the fact that I trusted my parents driving. But I always remember falling asleep on the way from, or on the way back from day trips to Galena or Wisconsin Dells. There was a comfort, I believe, or I believe, in knowing that I was on my way home. The only time I've ever actually freaked out in a car was in the state of Wyoming. My family was driving through the state to go from South Dakota to Colorado, wanting to see the unique geography along the way. I remember looking out onto the vast emptiness of the scenery ahead of us. It was red and yellow as far as the eye could see. Mountains dotted the distance on every side. Far. Far away, I could see a rock structure sticking out of the otherwise flat scenery. I watched it for what felt like 20 minutes and looked around it. Despite my father driving 70 miles per hour, we hadn't moved at all. The rock formation was no closer than it had been. I waited another 20 minutes. We hadn't gotten any closer. The flat terrain around us felt endless, like we were stuck on a roadrunner treadmill with the scenery passing by on a loop. Hmm. My heart began to race, and I felt like I wasn't getting enough air. We weren't getting anywhere. We were trapped in a fishbowl of a valley in the middle of nowhere, like I'd stepped into a Twilight Zone episode. We'd never make it back home. I just knew it. And that terrified. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Long ago, humans established a need for home. It's hard to live, to grow, to cultivate without having a place to be tied to. It may not be an actual home, but we all have a place that we are familiar with, where we have roots and social bonds. In life's randomness and chaos, it's comforting to have somewhere that's familiar to us. This isn't just evolutionary or historical, either. For example, look at our country and the election that's coming up. People on both sides of the aisle are terrified of this election. Both are convinced that if the other side wins, we lose our democracy, and that's scary. Despite how we may feel about our country right now, it is our home, and we don't want it to change for the worse. But this goes beyond our mental and our physical comfort, too. The Bible is one long story of finding home. Adam and Eve have the perfect home, with one stipulation that they try not to be like God, and ignoring that, humanity as a whole loses their first home. And then after that, the Jewish people are captives in a strange land, but are promised a new home in a new land if they follow God's covenant with them. They squander it and they sin, polluting their home and going against their God. They lose that home. They are forced out of their God-given home to Babylon, where they are prisoners yet again. It is then that God gathers them and brings them back once again to their home. Then Jesus comes along and shows that there's more to faith than just a land to call home. Jesus makes a new covenant, not just with the Jewish people, but with all people. This covenant is not about security in a land that we call home, but a renewal of that first Eden, the kingdom of God with many dwelling places which he will gather all people from around the world to. 
It seems to be a long-running theme in the biblical story of losing and regaining that spiritual home that we lost so long ago. Well, that's an overview of our human desire for a spiritual home seen through biblical history. We even see this desire for home running through our individual lives. Many humans spend their lives trying to find security and what they want out of life. But the passage of time means that those things never last. Most people simply live their lives trying to survive, and for those that do get the things that they crave, it's ultimately dust in the wind. Nothing is permanent in our world, yet we wish it was. Without even realizing it, we are seeking a true home away from the rust and the dust and the moths. In this way, we can identify with the Israelites wandering through the wilderness, or a Galilean couple searching for shelter in the little town of Bethlehem. We are all pilgrims on a journey. Now, humans don't like uncertainty, and unfortunately, life is full of uncertainty. Fortunately, the message that we get from the biblical story is that while empires rise and fall, and that life passes by, God remains with us and has already promised us a home that no one can take from us. Not the sword, not rust, not even our own hands can undo. There's comfort and certainty in that. We may not know exactly how it will work out. The journey of life often takes unwanted detours and side roads. But we know the ultimate destination. There's a lot of uncertainty and fear surrounding this year. We don't know what life will bring us or how the world will change. And being stuck in that uncertainty is anxiety-inducing. But with the promises of God to be with us, and that God will make a home with us one day, we can look at life with a new lens. We're not just surviving. We're not alone on this pilgrimage through life. Though we can't predict the ups and downs that will come, we are assured that God is in control, and that nothing in the next year, in the next decade, or even in eternity will separate us from God who loves us and the home that God has planned for us. So our moment for mission this week and for this month has been the Rockford Overnight Cafe, which is at Second First Congregational Church, um, and we appreciate all of your giving for that. Um, they appreciate all of the support of the community as well as, of course, other churches. In a world that offers a vision of never enough, we share God's abundant provision for all. While we could gain the world but lose our soul, it is from within our soul that we share in a generous spirit of giving. The wooden plate will go to the overnight cafe. The bronze plate will go to our general offering, which pays for the work of this church on an everyday basis. Thank you for your gifts.
shine upon you and lift you up each day in peace and love. Amen. Amen.